Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're going to be continuing our series in the Humblewood book, and we're going to be talking about one of the races within. Humblewood is a module that was actually designed as one of the early third-party modules for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. And the Humblewood is basically your stereotypical animal world. The bird folk are the most common races. Think of them similar to the humans of the Forgotten Realms. They are the most widespread and the most influential. Except in this world, they actually come in several varieties. And today we're talking about one of these specific races, the Luma. Luma are creatures that actually resemble things like pigeons and doves, except they aren't this big. They are actually a full-size creature that is a playable race in D&D. And we're going to discuss the mechanics of that race in just a moment. But before we get into it, I'd like to let you know, Relax Fantasy Review has memberships. For just a dollar a month, you can support me here on YouTube and get a couple benefits. First, you get a little badge next to your name in the comments, letting folks know that you're a supporter. But also, you get early access to my videos. I upload videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I upload them a day early for members only. If that interests you, you can click the join button just below the video down there. I'd love to see you in the comments. And if it doesn't interest you, that's totally fine. Just liking and subscribing supports me in a great way, and I'm very, very thankful for you watching my content. So, Lumas, because they are a more classic race of 5th edition, uh, third-party materials, they were released before the uh, advent of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. That means they have standard ability score increases, and we start off with a plus two in our Charisma, one of the most versatile stats in the game, covering spell casting, social interaction, several pillars of play, and it's one of the best ability scores to focus on. A plus two to Charisma is a 10 out of 10. Then you have the fact that they're a small-sized race. A small race is not quite as good as a medium-sized race. They have some benefits, some downsides. Overall, I think medium-sized tends to be the better one, but there's not huge handicaps here. I say being a small race is a 9 out of 10. And they do have a 25-foot walking speed. A slight handicap over the standard 30, but that's actually pretty typical for old 5th edition races that are small. Still, it is a lower speed. If I were DMing for this, I would just say to give them a 30-foot speed anyway. But as it's written, I give it an 8 out of 10 for that speed. Now, we said they were bird folk, but technically speaking, they can't fly. Bird folk in Humblewood do not have a flying speed. What they do have is a gliding speed. As a reaction, when they fall, they can spread their wings and reduce their dropping speed to 60 feet per round, taking no damage when they fall. And if they fall at least 10 feet, they can move their movement speed horizontally, giving them a lot of airborne maneuverability. This is a great power to get with a race. There's some classes and subclasses that give you this, and even a spell that does it, but they can just do it infinitely. And I say it's a 10 out of 10 power. Very, very powerful. On top of that, Lumas have a special power called the Wing Flap. This, as a bonus action, they can flap their wings and increase their jump, effectively adding half their movement speed to a jump. When they do this, um, they have to be starting from a ground position. It's written right in the rules that while they're gliding, they can't use a bonus action to, like, flap, you know, 12 feet in the air. But the fact that they can do this whenever they like, as long as they're on the ground, is still a cool little power. Jumping doesn't come up that often, but if it's going to... I mean, if you think about it, you can bonus action jump into the air and flap, and then you fall 10 feet, which lets you move your walking speed without touching the ground. But it still takes a bonus action. I say it's a 7 out of 10 power. Useful sometimes, but it's not going to come up all that much. It'd be really cool if you could do it while falling. If you were gliding and you flapped, I could see a person jumping a normal jump, and then as they drop, flapping their wings to do a sort of video game style double jump, that'd be really cool, but that's not how the um, rules work. 
Then they have the power called touched. This effectively says that Lumas are naturally magical. They gain one sorcerer cantrip of their choice. This gives them the ability to choose from the attacking cantrips, such as Firebolt and Ray of Frost, over to the utility cantrips, like Minor Illusion and Mage Hand. It's a nice ability. The only downside is that they have to use their charisma to cast it. They don't get to choose their ability um, that they can cast with, so no wizards, no clerics. This is for charisma casters only, unless it's a spell that doesn't require doesn't care about your charisma. If it's Mage Hand, you can use Mage Hand, and it doesn't matter what your class is. P putting this on a cleric or a druid is a nice thing. They just don't care. Mage Hand doesn't care what your charisma is. Overall, I say it's a 9 out of 10 power. It'd be nice if you had the ability to use any ability score for casting, but it's still really good. They also have a power called the Faded Power. Once per day, they can choose to re-roll a d20. This allows them to re-roll a failed attempt at a saving throw or ability check or attack roll. It's similar to a luck point, kind of granting yourself advantage, except luck points, you have three of them for long rest. This one you only have one, but it's not a feat. It's a racial trait. It's nice. It's a great way to give yourself another chance on a really important saving throw, I'd say. It's a 9 out of 10 ability. Really good. Now, because the Luma are the, again, the bird folk or the dominant race, they speak the dominant language, just like how humans speak common and most other races also speak common. In Humblewood, Lumas speak bird folk, which is their version of common. All races speak bird folk. Problem is, is that because they speak bird folk, they don't actually get a second language. There is no uh, bilingual Luma unless you're getting it from another source. Their race just says bird folk, and that's unfortunate. Most races are bilingual in D&D, so I'm only giving this a 7 out of 10. Now, there are two sub-races that come with the Luma. The first one is called the Sable Luma. This gives them a plus one to their constitution. They're the sturdier of the Luma. Constitution is a fantastic ability to boost, and a plus one to it, I give 7 out of 10. Then you have the hard-to-read ability. This means that anyone who uses an insight check to try to figure out your motives automatically has disadvantage against it, unless they're another Luma. Because Lumas have this weird sort of facial structure where other folks can't really tell what they're thinking, and only other Lumas can. In addition, you also have advantage on your deception checks, again, against other races instead of against other Luma, meaning that now you are, about, you are stacking advantage on deception and disadvantage on insight. Sable Lumas are incredible liars. Now, obviously this is still a very specific interaction, but it is it's going to make you one of the best charmers in the game. If you're a bard who can then stack on their College of Eloquence or something like that and, you know, really, really do good with their um, de deception checks, it's going to be awesome. Other than that, it's going to be fine. I say it's a 9 out of 10 power. And because they have that special resilience, they actually have a resilient trait, which gives them resistance against poison damage and advantage against the poison condition. That's another awesome power, and I give it a 9 out of 10. And I think the Sable Lumas overall are a 9 out of 10. Very, very good. The other type of Lumas are the Sarah Lunas, and they're a little more of the charming Lunas. They lean into the charisma because they also get a plus one to their Wisdom. Wisdom's a good stat, not the best in the game. It's a little more specific to specific types of spellcasters and skills. I still think that it's a good ability score to get. The plus one, I give a 6 out of 10. And then you get the Center of Attention feature. This is very simple. It gives you proficiency in the performance skill. So an extra skill proficiency is nice, and performance is a decent one. Comes up a lot. Depending on your campaign, it could be handy. I say 7 out of 10 for that. And then you have the Songbird power. This allows you to 
naturally cast the charm person spell once per day for free using this ability. Now this would be awesome once again if you were doing it with any sort of caster, but unfortunately it's very specific, it's charisma only. So if you're a sorcerer, warlock, or a bard or paladin, this works well. But Charm Person is one of those spells that actually cares about the saving throw DC. So it's okay. It's nice to have a free spell. You can't use your spell slots to continue casting it. It's just one casting. And it's good. It's decent. I say 7 out of 10. The Sarah Luna is a little bit more niche than the Sable Luna. I give it an 8 out of 10. Still a good race, lots of interesting powers, just not quite as widespread and as sturdy as the Sable. A little more specific. Still, I would argue that any Luma is a good race to play as with their gliding ability, their extra magic, their charming demeanor. There's a lot to love here. I'm seeing a sort of like small version of an elven race. Very fun and very thematic. I think that in the Humblewood campaign, this is an awesome race to play as, and it could just be taken out of Humblewood and implanted in any D&D campaign. Talk to your DM and see if they'd let you play it. I think you'll have a good time. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. Have a look for the join button down there, as well as a link to the Deck of Many's Humblewood. I'll put a link in the description so you can check the book out for yourself. I highly recommend that you do. Have a good one, my friends.